Hello, everyone. You're welcome. Hi. Oh, my God, I'm so excited to be here. Not Canada life. I almost died this year, for realsies. My appendix burst inside my body, which, if you don't know, is like the worst place. <laughs> and isn't it weird that our appendix bursts? Because it's the only organ in our body that doesn't have a job to do, but it's the first one to be like, fuck this. <laughs> really? You're the one that had it up to here? My liver has been pumping poison out of my body for years, happily, like a migrant worker, just happy to have a job. <laughs> Meanwhile, my appendix is like some spoiled college kid that can't believe it has to work a goddamn day in its life. And my liver's like, hey, appendix, can you help us out? We got a lot of work to do. And my appendix was like, uh, my dad owns like, <laughs> or I would. They don't even know what makes our appendix burst. Can you believe that? 2011? No idea. Why? That's crazy, right? I mean, we can send people to Mars, probably. Don't look it up. And we have no idea <laughs> what makes our appendix burst. I came out of surgery. I was like, doctor, why did my appendix burst? And he was like, whew, man. Oh, God, right? <laughs> Sucked. <laughs> Seven days in the hospital, emergency surgery, no health insurance. You don't even know what that's like. That's when you have to pay for it. <laughs> Guess how much? $45,000. Yeah, and you find out when you get a bill in the mail for $45,000. That's when you know. In the mail, by the way, with the other mail. Like, it's just more mail. <laughs> Except it's a bill for $45,000 in a white envelope like all the other envelopes. That should not come in a white envelope. That should come in a black envelope with a skull and crossbones on it. And when you open it, a picture of your hopes and dreams falls out and bursts into flames because now you owe the hospital $45,000. My friends had all kinds of great financial advice. They were like, uh, fuck them. <laughs> which is a great idea, so I looked it up, but in some, you know, they were like, what are they gonna do, put your appendix back in? You know? Good point. I looked it up, some countries, they do. I'm just kidding, but whatever country you just thought of, you're racist. Uh, oh, we just learned a little bit about ourselves on that one, didn't we? So, but I'm doing the right thing, because they saved my life. That's the second time that's happened. Uh, I'm doing the right thing, because they, they saved my life, and I'm paying them back. Uh, $20 a month. So if they ever want to see all their money, they just have to make sure I live to be 657 years old. So balls in your court, Beth Israel Hospital. Let's do this. I'm ready to live forever. I recently dated a model. Since you brought it up, I guess we'll talk about it. And... I don't bring it up to sound obnoxious. I don't bring it up to say it was awesome. It was not awesome. It stunk, and I'll tell you why. Models are skinny, and that's not what I like. Ever since I was 10, I like when you can squeeze stuff on a lady. I like squeezing all your stuff, you know what I mean? Like, even if you got, like, a soft head, I'll take it. I just want to squeeze something. This girl had no squeezins. Maybe think of all the girls I dated the last 10 years. Normal-sized girls, pretty girls, every single one of them at some point complain that they're fat, right? At some point, a girl looks in the mirror and she's like, oh my God, these pants make me look fat. Or like, oh my God, this song makes me look fat, or whatever. And I spent 10 years of my life in relationships like, you're crazy, there's no way you could be fat. And then I dated this model, and it turns out, uh, they were all fat. Every single one of those girls was totally fat. They were so fat, it was disgusting. Because... <laughs> In their heads, they're comparing themselves to models. Of course you're fat compared to a model. Everybody is. Here's the good news. Dudes don't give a shit about models. We don't compare you to models. You know what dudes compare you to? Dudes. And if you don't have a dick, you're not fat, ever. That's our rule. Did you know that? If you take your shirt off and you have tits, we're like, well, look at this skinny little lady over here. Somebody could use a second lunch and I'm buying. 
Baby Got Back should be my favorite song, right? You know Baby Got Back. You guys got that here, right? It's about big butts. Here's the problem. Sir Mix-a-Lot, who's not even really a knight, is all white boys don't like fat butts or whatever. And I was 10 when that came out, and I was like, excuse me, Sir Mix-a-Lot, but I happen to love fat butts, and I don't even know what they're for yet, but I know I want it fat. And it turns out it's so they can sit on your face, but I didn't know that when I was 10 years old. But if you had told me that, I would have been like, well, that makes sense. Who wants a bony butt on their face? I want a butt feels like donuts. When's DuckTales on? I'm 10. <laughs> we were on our first date at a restaurant because I'm 30. And she's telling me about her gay friend. Gary, she's like, you know, Gary feels bad for straight guys like you because 80% of the male nerve endings for sexual pleasure are in the asshole. And I was like, I don't care. <laughs> oh, I've been doing great with that other 20%. Good talk though, that was a good talk. That's a weird thing to say at dinner. Pass the salt is something you say at dinner. What she said sounds like something you save for later when you're gonna try something weird on somebody's butt that they don't wanna do and you're trying to make it sound awesome. But she said it at eight. So now I'm looking out for it for four hours. You're not gonna get me now. You cock blocked your own weird butt shit. <laughs> I'm Julie McCullough, you guys are awesome. Thank you very much.